housing and housing financing issues are actually of critical importance to Sardesha. As you probably know, Sardesha is home to one of every four people in our planet. Uh, now, critically, 14% uh, of that 1.5 billion uh, population is without homes or living in inadequate housing conditions, urban slums and squatter settlements. Furthermore, 45% uh, of the population uh, right now is uh, in overcrowded, uh, living in overcrowded conditions. Now, overall, what is the challenge that we're facing? Uh, we have a shortage of urban housing units of something like more than 38 million units in the region. If we look at uh, the average household size, uh, uh, that basically translates to something like 212 million people, which are homeless people in the South Asia region. That means one of every seven people living in the South Asia region are living in those conditions. If we look at India alone, we're looking at something like 27 million uh, uh, units of uh, backlog in terms of overall uh, urban uh, housing. If we look at Pakistan, it's something like eight million dollars, uh, eight million units, uh, and of that, three million are related to urban. If you look at the country like Afghanistan that has been in war over the last uh, three decades, uh, most of the housing stock uh, is either totally destroyed or damaged. So the overall picture that we're looking is a critical one for South Asia. Now, if you look at slums in metropolitan cities, nearly half of the population in cities like Karachi or Mumbai or Dhaka live in slums? Well, um, the uh, report basically tries to gauge uh, access to housing and housing finance for the poorest and for lower middle class um, population groups. The problem with South Asia is that not only is it the region with uh, the most poor, one in every two people, poor people in the world actually reside in South Asia, but also the housing markets in South Asia are more limited than in any other continent in the world. By some measures, for example, mortgages to GDP, South Asia is uh, measures at about 3% comparing, for example, to a country like China or Thailand, who are all above 15%. Um, these two factors combined cause a significant percentage um, of people in South Asia to be underserved in terms of access to housing and access to mortgage financing. The key messages of the report are that while we have about 38 billion missing housing units uh, in South Asia that uh, uh, are needed to be built and, uh, and uh, given to markets, um, and that represents about $200 billion investment uh, in housing markets that is necessary, quite a considerable figure. Um, while we have these needs, the markets are indeed growing. They're growing at about 30%, which is uh, very, very fast growth uh, for, uh, by any standard. Um, the problem is the growth in, in markets for housing and housing finance are not reaching the poor. So in order for markets to actually expand enough to reach the poor, we would have to um, present more original solutions. Um, to the problem. The markets themselves will not automatically grow themselves out of the problem with the underserved. This original solution, as we suggest in the report, would involve new and innovative housing finance instruments as well as um, more work on the housing finance infrastructure to provide long-term financing. Um, other than that, there is a whole slew of regulatory measures that could be modified in order to enable markets more such as administrative use of land, uh, foreclosure regimes, and above all, credit information and housing and housing finance information provision. Well, it's a very complex issue because uh, <coughs> everywhere in the world, uh, both uh, financial sectors and the uh, developer industry tend to, uh, of course, uh, uh, provide uh, solutions to the uh, wealthy people. It's much easier. 
Uh, so, uh, trying to bring uh, both supply and finance uh, to serve uh, lower income groups uh, involve a whole set of uh, uh, instruments and uh, policies, and uh, we have uh, an experience in doing so uh, in many countries from Mexico to Egypt or uh, Tanzania, and, uh, for instance. So it's a combination which, of course, will depend uh, from a country, to, will uh, change from a country to another one. But uh, uh, basically, uh, in South Asia, uh, the key points would be to make sure that there is a land supply with a proper urban regulation to uh, avoid you know, uh, land price speculation and uh, inflation. Uh, we need to have... Uh, uh, <coughs> lenders uh, ready to serve this, uh, so it's not always uh, mainstream banks, but uh, we have to support uh, the grassroots lenders or um, uh, microfinance institutions we want, which want to develop uh, housing products. Uh, the governments, of course, uh, must be involved and, uh, with uh, efficient subsidy policies. That's a very important thing. And finally, um, we have to provide uh, funding solutions to the lenders because housing finance is by definition long-term uh, resources to make it affordable, which means that uh, lenders must have access to uh, adequate uh, resources in terms of uh, liquidity, in terms of interest rates. So we have a kind of a, a typical uh, toolbox here, yeah, I would say, uh, on all these uh, different issues and uh, work out the best uh, customized solution for uh, each country, depending uh, what is lacking uh, in this uh, specific context.